This is the fifth video in the Edexcel P3 revision tutorials. Today we will be looking at the uses of reflection and refraction. In the previous video we looked at reflection and refraction as well as how to calculate the angles involved. We also looked at the critical angle and how this can cause total internal reflection. So in today's video we will be looking at a medical use of total internal reflection. We're going to look at ultrasound scans including how to calculate the depth and time taken. And we will look at how ultrasound can be used in both the diagnosis and treatment of a variety of diseases. So what is total internal reflection? Well, as we looked at in the last video, total internal reflection is when the light rays reflect inward back into the medium. So it is the complete reflection of a light ray reaching an interface with a less dense medium when the angle of instance is greater than the critical angle. So beyond the critical angle, all rays will reflect back into the medium. As we saw in the last tutorial, the critical angle for glass is about 42 degrees. So any waves approaching glass at an angle greater than 42 degrees will reflect back inwards. As we looked at in the last video, we saw that as the incident ray increased, the amount of refraction changed until we reach the critical angle. At the critical angle, this is where the angle of incidence causes the angle of refraction to run alongside the change in the boundary between the mediums. Beyond the critical angle, so where the incident ray is now greater than this critical angle, we get this total internal reflection. So instead of the refraction, we are now getting reflection back into the medium. We will now look over an examination style calculation question that we looked at in the previous video. This is an example of an examination style question. So we are finding out that a ray of light has an incident angle of 30 degrees on the boundary between air and glass. The refractive index of the glass is 1.5. It's given us the signs and it has told us that the angle of refraction is going to be just less than 20 degrees. We are going to be using the equation n equals sine i over sine r. This is Snell's law that we looked at in the previous video. From the question, we have n which is the refractive index, which is 1.5. And we have also been given the angle of incidence, which is 30, which is i. We now need to rearrange this equation so that sine r is the focus of the equation. When rearranged, this equation will be sine r equals sine i over n. We can now plug our numbers in. So this will become sine r equals sine 30 over 1.5, which equals 0.3 recurring. Remember, we now need to work out sine to the minus 1 of 0.3 recurring in order to work out r. So we will rearrange the equation to give us sine to the minus 1 of 0.3 answer of 19.47 to two decimal places. The 20 degrees mentioned in the question. We will now move on to have a look at how optical fibres work. An optical fibre is a long, thin, transparent rod made of glass or plastic. It is used in order to transmit light or data across large distances. 
it works by continually reflecting the light back inwards. As we can see, the light is reflected back into the medium each time. This occurs due to the critical angle as well as total internal reflection. Each time that the light ray reaches the boundary between the mediums, it does so at an angle greater than the critical angle. This causes it to reflect back into the medium. It will then do this at every boundary that it reaches. This causes the light to bounce along the fibre, meaning that it can be transmitted very quickly and with limited loss. This makes it suitable for Christmas trees as well as other lighting appliances as well as for transmitting large amounts of data, for example in fibre optic internet. Finally, Optical fibres can also be used in medicine, as we saw in the first video of this series, where they can be used for endoscopes in order to examine inside the human body. We will now look at an example examination question. An example of an examination question about optical fibres can be seen on this slide. We would be looking for an explanation on how optical fibres work, making sure we are talking about the critical angle as well as the process of total internal reflection. Drawing a labelled diagram will count as one mark towards this question. We will now look at the reflection of ultrasound. You should remember ultrasound and infrasound from Edexal P1. The human hearing range is from 20 to 20,000 hertz. Ultrasound is any sound above 20,000 hertz, so therefore it cannot be heard by humans. Earlier on, in P3, we had a look at the uses of ultrasound in medicine. These included prenatal scanning, which can be used to ensure that a baby is healthy before birth, as well as looking at medical treatments, including the treating of kidney stones. This here is a kidney stone where ultrasound can be used to break down the kidney stone in order for it to be passed through the urine. We can use ultrasound to work out the distances that objects are away from each other. This is how we can put together the image of the baby. A computer can put together an image of the data of the returning ultrasound waves to construct this image in real time. In order to do this, we need to be able to work out the calculations. From P1, you should remember this equation, where the wave speed equals distance divided by time, so therefore distance equals wave speed times time. When we are working out an ultrasound distance, we need to be able to work out the speed and the time it takes for the pulse of sound to travel to the object and back. Because we will be looking at an echo, we need to make sure we divide our answer by two. We will now look at an example ultrasound calculation question. An example question could be the echo takes 0.8 seconds to return and the speed of sound in water is 150 metres per second. How deep is the water? In this regard, we have been given a time and we have been given a wave speed. As such, we can do distance equals wave speed times time. This will give us 1500 metres per second times 0.8 seconds, which equals 1200 metres. However, remember, this is the time that the echo takes to go there and back, 
as such, we need to divide this answer by 2 in order to find the depth. And so our final answer is a depth of 600 metres. We can further this equation as we will look at on the next page. In order to look at pulse echo in more detail, we can look at the following. So if we were to shout at a wall, as we looked at, we will see that the sound will travel, it will hit the wall and it will travel back. So we end up with a distance of 2x. Therefore, the speed of sound is given by v, which is the wave speed, equals 2x divided by t, time. v for wave speed, x for distance, and t for time. Therefore, we can rearrange this equation to x is wave speed times time divided by 2. This is the same equation that we looked at previously. However, we are now using v for wave speed and x for distance. You can use either of these equations in the exam. However, please be aware that in the exam paper, they can ask you a question using either of them in the wording. Here are two further questions around the use of ultrasound distance calculations. I would like you to pause the video. We will then look at them on the next page. So for the first question, you should have got an answer of 1.25 metres for the depth. And secondly, a time of 0.53 seconds for the sound to return to the ship. This concludes the first part of Edexcel P3. As we have now looked over lenses, the eye, refraction and reflection. The next video, video 6, will focus on x-rays.